Artificial intelligence is being used to do many things, from diagnosing cancer, stopping the deforestation of endangered rainforests, helping farmers in India with crop insurance, and it will help you find the next Firefest documentary on Netflix or Hulu. And in some cases, AI can even be used to help you save money on your energy bill. But how could something so helpful be racist? An older TV episode of Better Off Ted called Radical Sensitivity gives us some perspective. In the episode, mega corporation Viridian Dynamics has decided to save money at its home office by installing sensors that will switch off the power whenever nobody's in a room. Except that there's a glitch in the system and it keeps people that are darker skin from being recognized from the algorithm. And when the show's protagonist, Ted Chris, suggests that these sensors are racist, his boss, Veronica Palmer, explains that The company's position is that it's actually the opposite of racist because it's not targeting black people, it's just ignoring them. We can go back to 2015 and witness one shocking real-life example of this bias in action when Google's image service, Google Photos, mistakenly categorized black people as gorillas. Was Google wrong? Or were they just ignoring black people as well? It's a question that we don't really have all the answers to, but most artificial intelligence algorithms are tested on data provided by researchers, while Google stated that their algorithm was tested with images by employees of different races, there obviously was a lack of data to detect and distinguish darker skin tones from lighter ones. If you go to the AI expert Vivian Ming, she told the Wall Street Journal that some of the systems struggle to recognize non-white people because they are trained on internet images that are just overwhelmingly white. Now, I don't think that AI algorithms are more biased than other statistical models such as regression, but let's take a second. The amazing effectiveness of AI suggests that I think it will be used in far more applications and everyday use cases of our life. And I think it's totally true in 2019. I use AI when I'm taking photos on my iPhone, when I'm watching videos on YouTube, when I'm taking the best route to work in the morning through Google Maps. I even use AI to turn on and off the lights. However, as a society, we risk encoding our existing gender and ra racial biases in algorithms that could easily determine medical care, employment decisions, criminal justice decisions, and more in the future. And this bias is already happening with simple models. But the widespread adoption of AI will probably rapidly accelerate this trend, especially in the next five to 10 years, which are particularly critical. And we already know that we must get more women and people of color building and working on this tech in order to recognize, prevent, and address some, sometimes what can be known as racist AI algorithms. Being someone that's familiar with the tech scene and knowing a ton of programmers, I hit up the data scientist, Travis Hopp to see if he could run some of his fancy AI magic on some of my headshots. So let's break down what Travis has created. He's created an AI algorithm known as a general adversarial network, better known as a GAN. Now he didn't make this GAN, but he took the GAN and made it so that you can imagine yourself as someone else through the creation of synthetic faces. A thing to note here is that his GAN is trained off the Celeb A dataset, which is a super large dataset used for training facial detection and recognition algorithms. Now, the Celeb A dataset has more than 200,000 celebrity images. However, like most datasets, it is underrepresented with people of color. So it might just start racial profiling and get a little discriminatory with me, but let's see, and hopefully it doesn't. To start off, we will look at what the AI thinks Christina Farr from CNBC could look like in the various synthetic versions of herself. The real image is on the left, and none of the faces on the right are real. It's interesting to see how AI can envision different versions of yourself. Possible use cases here could be in the checkout aisle of a cosmetic store like Sephora. Imagine walking up to the Mac or Urban Decay kiosk and it's scanning your face, then showcasing what all the possible makeup combinations would look like. Here we have some synthetic faces from the notable musician Louis Fonzi. In this video, we're seeing some facial variation and just look at his eyebrows, right? Even more surprising is you're seeing some gender exploration. So the AI is creating, you know, the synthetic version of Louis as a female. And there's lots of use cases here for entertainment and in turning yourself into a digital human just off a headshot. 
And I could see this being an integral part of an immersive movie experience in the future where like Netflix just has a profile of your headshot and will put you somewhere in the movie as a cameo unexpectedly. Similar to how Stan Lee used to always have a cameo in all of the Marvel movies. Rest in peace to our man Stan Lee. Stan Lee, I hope you're looking over us. All right now, let's get back to it and let's see what the algorithm would do with me. Given I'm a black male, I'm sure this data set is not gonna be too nice, so I'm not expecting too much. And here's the image that Travis used as my reference photo. If you think it's a nice photo, drop that like. I really would appreciate it because the algorithm, you know, it didn't come close to what it thinks I look like. You know, see, this picture looks like crap. This is my synthetic face and the best it could do is, you know, explore the latent space and try to come up with this similar likeness, but it completely fails around the eyes and took away my beard and maybe I'm just being hard on myself. Let me know in the comments below, but let's see how my synthetic identities will turn out. Unfortunately, it's not too pretty and it's fairly unusable for any of the imaginative use cases I described above. Travis believes this is probably due to what I mentioned before, a lack of people of color in the data set. And I'm not putting this cameo of me in any movie. So there you have it. If the data set isn't diverse, the AI algorithm can in fact turn out biased and ruin the experience for people like myself. And it's not like we didn't know this already, but I wanted to experience it personally and showcase it for you all to see here. And hopefully this conversation contributes to bringing forth a meaningful change to the AI algorithms that we already have in our daily lives. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't become an Inevitable Human member, please do so because Inevitable Human is how we make awesome content like such. And it's the future thinkers out there that are a part of this conversation every day and help bring forth change to some of the emerging technologies that are shaping our realities day in and day out. I'm QR Sinceri and I'm out.